two-year long-term review on my 2014 Yamaha WR250R. Let's go for a ride. You are watching Cycle Cruises all on one motorcycle channel. Subscribe today. This is a one and only type of bike. There's really no other bike like this on the market. Uh, basically, you're getting a three-in-one bike with this bike. You're getting a street bike, dirt bike, and an adventure bike. You can also use it as a stunt bike and supermoto trim. So really, you're getting a four-in-one bike. And I'll tell you guys that a lot of you guys complain, you know, obviously with stock, it's, it's slower. It has a ton of stuff on it that can be removed to lighten the bike up. In stock form, this bike weighs 295 pounds, but you can actually take off 15 pounds off of this bike. There's no reason why you can't get this bike to 280, 285 pounds wet. And that's even with adding some of the uh, off-road stuff you need, like, uh, you know, skid plate and, uh, you know, some hand guards and whatnot. But I'll tell you guys that you do not need to do all the mods that I did on this bike. I put in over $3,000 in parts on this bike and an extra $1,000 in labor. So a total of like $4,000 plus I've spent on this bike. To me, it's well worth it. Uh, but you don't need to spend that type of money on this bike to get performance better on this bike. You only need about $1,000. Here's a list of the basic mods you'll need to get this bike much better. As you can see, less than 1000 bucks. By the way, links to all the mods that I've done on this bike. Go to CycleCruiser.com. Click on the menu tab, My Mods. First off, I want to compare this to the DRZ400 because a lot of people say, Cycle Cruiser, why didn't you get the DRZ400? The 400 is faster. Let me tell you, the main reason why I didn't get the DRZ400, there's two reasons, two big reasons. Number one, it's 22 pounds heavier than this bike, and also it has a carburetor. Some of you guys say, oh, the carburetor's easy, easy to work with. You know, it's a, to me, it's a pain in the ass. I've had dirt bikes when I was a kid, and, and when I was a kid, all they had was carbureted bikes. They didn't have the luxury of fuel injection bikes back then. Personally, I like fuel injection. I don't have to deal with it at all. I can use, I can change the settings easily with the fuel programmer, and uh, I don't have to deal with cold starts in the mor you know, cold starting problems in the morning, especially here in Ohio. You know, in the winter time, we get really cold days, and uh, and also that bike is just really kind of outdated, man. I mean, really, that's like a '90s bike. I wish Suzuki would update that bike. I think it would. They would sell a ton of them if they did. Lighten that bike up to at least the weight of this bike. Put a fuel injection on that bike, and I tell you, those DRZs would would sell probably better than this bike. But this bike, what is so awesome, it has an aluminum frame. Like I said, 295 pounds, and if you mod it, you could get up to thir at least. I have about close to 30 horsepower that I've gotten this bike to and I tell you it's night and day difference from stock it's much quicker off the line it's just so much better but we're gonna get on the bike here and we'll, we'll talk more about it and uh, I'll give you my opinion on everything now I'll tell you guys a con for this bike in my opinion is the suspension could be better for heavier riders i'm only about a buck 85 but i put gear on i could be could be about 200 uh pounds with gear which is about uh the stock suspension is set up for 170 pounds to 190 pounds uh with gear so but i'll tell you guys if you get the suspension dialed in for your weight it'll be way better i had mine dialed in for my weight uh with gear and it is way better than it was uh, but I may end up rebuilding having the suspension rebuilt by go race probably about an extra thousand fifteen hundred dollars or something like that but I tell you guys a lot of you guys say cycle cruiser why do you spend so much money on this bike man I mean come on why don't you just get a proper uh, just get you a proper which uh freaking dirt bike man the reason why is because this bike has such low maintenance, man. We're talking about uh, we're talking about 26,000 mile uh, valve adjustment intervals and uh, 3,000 mile oil changes. You know, dirt bikes, you're doing oil changes in hours, guys. Like 50, you're talking about like uh, you know every at least every 500 miles on a dirt bike, if not more. 
But I tell you, this bike is fully capable. I've dropped this bike numerous times in the mud, man. Pulled it out of mud. No problems. You don't hear me bitching about weight. Weight is not an issue for me, and this bike is awesome. Not only off-road, you see me having a good time here. Is uh shit, where is the exit out of here? Power through this shit. Ugh. If I can get out of here without falling, it's a good day. Shit. <laughs> see that? Fully capable guys. Alright, where the hell am I trying to get to? <laughs> Alright. But I tell you guys, this bike, zero vibes. No vibes on the highway. And look at that. Amazing. I don't know why people bitch about the stock suspension though. Oh shit. Should have wheelie through that, damn it. Get some slide action. Right into Hey, I made it out! Oh! <laughs> I probably could have went over that anyhow, over that parking bump. But I tell you guys that you don't need a lot of power off-road. So the people that bitch about power off-road, you know, and this bike will help a riders transition to dirt bikes better. Because you, you hop on a dirt bike, the torque. I mean, this bike is so much easier to ride, man, than a, uh, you know, with a dirt bike that has a ton of power for a new rider. So, this is just, I, I believe, holy shit, we got a black cat here. I hope I don't have bad luck, man. <laughs> Woo! That's some slide action. Uh-oh, making that horse go crazy. <laughs> Some real horsepower. Oh man, I love this bike. It's just your do-it-all bike. And what I love is that I can go, I'm, I plan on doing a Trans-American Trail at some point. And I'll tell you what I love about it is you can throw a four gallon tank on this bike and you can do adventure riding on this. Good times, baby. But yeah, this bike has taken every hill that I've thrown at it, man. Every steep hill that I've thrown at it, it has done. No problems. In this bike, top speed, you know, even with the 47 tooth sprocket, I could do 80 miles an hour, do 75 all day, vibe free. Try doing that on a dirt bike. Not, you ride on the highway too long on a dirt bike. You gonna burn the engine out, man. They're not designed for that type of ride. Some slide action. <laughs> Woo! Give me some slide action, baby. <laughs> Woo! Woo! And you come out here in the fields, man. Get you some slide action. Good times. But I tell you guys, this uh, yeah, I tell you guys, you can't go wrong with the WR250. Now I'm gonna probably add a dirt bike to the garage, but this bike ain't going nowhere, man. I just love to do, be able to do everything on this bike. It's just your do-it-all bike, man. Great commuter bike. Need some slide action. Let me get out of here. Okay, let's get back on the street. Get back on the streets. Good times. <laughs> now, I'll tell you guys, as far as some cons for this bike, um, when you do the performance mods, you will lose fuel efficiency. With all the mods that I've done, although I've gained, you know, close to 30 horsepower, 
Uh, I lost 15 miles per gallon in fuel efficiency average. I'm only doing like 43 miles per gallon now, man. I used to do about 58, 59, and I'm hard on the throttle though. If I lightened up on the throttle and was just chilling around town, I'd get a lot better. But that's what I tell you, you're gonna have to upgrade. If you do the performance mod, you're gonna have to upgrade to a three gallon tank. But I tell you, this IMS three gallon tank is great because it's actually lighter than the stock tank. The stock tank is metal and this is plastic um, and you don't have to put you know a full three gallons in here if you don't want to if you're just gonna be riding in the you know doing some short tracks in the woods or whatnot and you want to save on weight just put a couple gallons in there but yet you have that three gallon capacity that you could you could put that extra three uh, gallon of gas in there to give you the longer range I can generally get about ah uh, I would say about I could get about 150, 160 miles out of a tank um, with my mod, you know, the mods that I've done and with this IMS tank. So it's perfect for me. Um, the stock light sucks. Stock headlight. Definitely change that up to an LED light. Like I said, I have links to all the mods that I did. I, I love these Zeta handguards on the bike. Fantastic. I've had no problems. It's taken a beating. I've dropped this bike. Uh, numerous times I've, as you some of you may know I looped a wheelie on this playing around trying to do a 12 o'clock wheelie <laughs> Picked it right back up bike was good the only thing that smashed was the uh, the peg and and I wanted to replace the pegs anyhow replace this some DRC wide foot pegs and I love them man these wide foot pegs are so much more comfortable and they're strong too they're stronger than stock I've dropped this bike since with these uh, these new pegs on there, man. No, no problems. A lot of people, uh, you know, obviously prefer this over the you know the big 1200 adventure bikes that weigh a ton, six, you know, five. To, even the Honda Africa Twin weighs like 500 pounds, man. I tell you, you don't want to drop that bike, guys. You drop that bike a bunch of times off road, you know, doing trying to. Do some hairy trails or whatnot you'll be in you'll be in a world of hurt and could possibly get a hernia like there's a motor vlogger on youtube that had adventure bike and quickly learned the hard way and he ended up selling and getting a drz because he realized that weight is you know it's a lot of weight to deal with it's very irritating wears you out you know a lot of you guys some of you guys complain about the weight of this bike compared to a proper dirt bike that ain't nothing i mean this bike with all the stuff removed on this bike like I said, 285 pounds wet, and you say with a WR250F, uh, the off-road bike, uh, that bike I think is sitting at 258 pounds wet, so you're saving about 26 pounds. You compare 26 pounds difference compared to freaking 120 pounds. <laughs> the Honda Africa Twin is like 500 and something pounds. That's big. That, now that's a difference in weight. You know what I'm saying? And if you're like me and you're just going to be hitting some little single track trails here and there, hitting some hills, doing some urban hooliganism, then uh, this bike is perfect for that, guys. I mean, if you're going to be entering races, enduro races, or be doing like all day long single tracks or something, of course you want the dirt bike, man. Of course, you probably want that light, you know, lighter weight and everything. But even then, this bike can do it, man. You can do everything you want it to. And uh, I tell you guys, fantastic dual sport. I can afford any bike, any bike I want, man. And to be honest with you, I'm too lazy to just be constantly doing maintenance on a dirt bike. And also, you got to deal with the vibes, vibrations. Uh, like I said, you're married to a to a wrench and oil bottles of oil, where you have to change every 15 hours. Uh, you'll be married to a feeler gauge, checking valves. Uh, clearance levels at least every probably like every 30 hours just depending on how hard to ride the bike this bike there's an adventure company in Australia that runs uh, a fleet of these bikes for their company off-road company and they, they say the guy said he's never changed he's never had to adjust the valves on his bike he's they check it one time when they first get the bike and then they check it after uh, when they get ready to uh, when it hits like 26,000 miles 
and they said they've never had a bike that was the the, uh, the valves were out of spec this is one of the most reliable dual sport or motorcycles period that you will ever find and you know some of you guys said why you spend all that money on this bike let me tell you guys that if you add up all the extra maintenance you'll be doing on those street legal dirt bikes like the KTM 500 EXC, the Beta 500 RRS, or any any of those street legal dirt bikes that are available for the European from the European countries, um, this bike, all the mod, the mods that you've done on this bike will pay itself off. Not only, not only that, it's going to save you time. This is a bike I could take home. Look at this. It's fun not only off road. But it's also fun in the twisties as well. Let's ride! Yeah! You guys say, Cycle Cruiser, you don't like riding in no twisties, man. I want to see you riding some motherfucking twisty action. And here you go, baby, riding some twisty action. I'll tell you guys, this bike is awesome. But now the tires, you're going to have to upgrade the tires. MT21 front uh, by Pirelli it's called the Scorpion MT21 in the front and the rear do a deal uh, Dunlap D606 I've had I've been riding for a long time with these tires and they, they have they don't even need changing yet and that's another awesome thing about this bike uh, that it doesn't have all that bottom end power like the you know the dirt bikes do uh, but again that's gonna help save your tires that's less tires you have to buy so because all that torque man it wears it tires out just like you know my cbr 1000 double r wears out rear tires a lot faster than the than the 600 double r did or any other bikes i've had because all that torque you have and you do a lot of hard starts and you really get on that bike you know that torque eats them tires up so you know it just depends on basically on uh what your preferences are, what you're looking for. If you're just doing completely off-roading and not much street, just doing connecting roads to get to the off-road trails, but mostly, then of course you want the street legal dirt bike. If that's what you want to, you know, save the weight, you'll have that the power. But if you want a bike, three-in-one bike, that can do the adventure ride, vibration free on the streets, can ride on the highway, can ride single tracks, can do everything and you still have fun on this bike WR250R baby WR250R see here's a hill here look nothing handles it like nothing now I'll just make sure I don't hit a tree branch coming down <laughs> Slide action. <laughs> Good times, baby. Woo! Good time. I tell you, this is more fun than I have on my CBR 1000 double R, guys. It truly is. Get back on the street. I'm street legal. Having a good time. <laughs> you see, guys. In my videos, you can see I have more fun on this bike than I do my CBR 1000 to Blar. Woo! Gotta be careful, man. I almost did a low slot side. It's got, gotta be careful. One thing you need to keep taking to remember as a tip, guys. When you ride off-road, make sure that you're careful when you get back on the street. Because you, you still have some mud on your rear tire. And that's how I did that low side in the parking lot. in the parking lot than on the street you know you don't really you want to be very careful riding out here on the streets last thing you want to do is you know go down and then have hey he's got a wr 250r dude he knows what's up man Woo! good times good times <laughs> i love it baby 
you know on the street guys I'll tell you guys liter bikes are it's too much bike for the streets man I'll be honest with you it's just it's too much the only thing that makes uh, the, the liter bikes great on the street is it just has a lot of low end it has a ton of torque <laughs> That's the only saving grace on it. Otherwise, it's completely unnecessary, man. You know, you're, you're increasing your risk of death, man. You know, these streets are made for cruising. It's not made for, uh, you know, as a racetrack, get down and do knee slides, and elbow slides, and doing wheelies and shit. That's what's awesome about this bike. I take it off-road, and I can do wheelies, I can do slides, I can do uh, go up hills, you know, get a great cardio workout, riding over stuff, and it's real fun, man. Way more fun than riding out here on the streets, guys. The only time I have fun riding on the streets is ride, really riding this bike in the twisties, man, because I can really get on the throttle and fly around and have a good time, man, and I'm not doing crazy you know uh felony speeding out here i'm having a good time and uh these bikes are very cheap to insure i pay 120 dollars for the whole year zero deductible full coverage and this i mean you it's it's cheap insurance for everybody all the way across the board young and old everybody man so really there there's no excuses and like i said very cheap maintenance parts are easy to come by a lot of aftermarket support Bulletproof reliability can get 100,000 miles. Uh, like I said, there's an adventure company in Australia that has a fleet of these bikes. And they sell them. They, they sold the bike at 100,000 miles, man. And it was still excellent condition. Imagine, you, you could never be able to, a dirt bike would never be able to do that. You'd have to have a, several rebuilds before 100,000, a bunch of rebuilds before 100,000 miles. Can't do it, man. For the price of this bike, 3-in-1 bike that you're getting, like I said, street, dirt, adventure, you know, cheap to insure, cheap, low maintenance for people that have busy lives like I do. I work a business, I have a business, I'm trying to take care of a relative, all that. I don't have time to sit up there and be checking valves and doing oil changes every 500 miles and all that BS, man. Um, as you know that's what's awesome about this bike man I'm not trying to sell you on the bike you know it depends on your preference what you're looking for guys like I said that's what it's always this is perfect for me and if you want a bike that that can do a, you know pretty much do everything it, you could even take this bike you could even take this bike to the uh, to the uh, uh, motocross track it can do everything so, I don't know, that's all I have for you guys in this video, man. What else can I say? But, like I said, if you want to get links to all the mods I've done on this bike and my CBR 1000 R, go to my website, cyclecruiser.com, click on the menu tab, My Mods. Uh, all the links are there. And uh, I even have the video review that I did on the mods for, for both of the bikes uh, on that, that link. If you want to see more of my videos, also on my website, click on My Videos, and that's listing uh, links to, uh, uh, excuse me, playlists to all the different videos I've done. I have it, have my videos categorized into various playlists, and hopefully you can find something that will inform you or entertain you. Hey, hit thumbs up if you like this video. Share this video with your friends. And uh, tell them to get out here and get you a motorcycle. And this is the ultimate person best starter bike because it can take a beating you don't have to worry about dropping it it's cheap it can take a beating i have a, the only thing i've replaced on this bike after dropping it a bunch of times screwing around is a, a foot peg that i plan on replacing anyhow to better foot pegs nothing else man but you're gonna have to put the armor on this bike like i said these hand guards skid plate the uh, radiator guard that'll keep this bike bulletproof but that's all I have for you in this video. So until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Deuces.
Hey, don't forget to check out my other YouTube channel that features the original bug out modal van that is designed and built by yours truly so that I can live in my van with my motorcycle. So hey, check me out at youtube.com forward slash bug out moto. Subscribe today.